Hi guys, it's Cindy, AKA Disney Queen. Today we are going to talk about Walt Disney World tickets. So stay tuned. Hi guys, it's Cindy, AKA Disney Queen. Last month we talked about the difference in pricing for staying at a Walt Disney World hotel versus staying off property. And, um, I thought this month we would talk about the actual cost of a ticket. Um, it is not cheap to go to Disney and it has become increasingly more expensive. And now there is Genie Plus and Lightning Lane and, uh, just so many different choices that it can make your head spin. I'm not really going to talk a lot about G Plus and Lightning Lane as of right now. I will tell you that if you want Genie Plus, it's an additional $15 on top of the cost that you pay for your ticket. And Lightning Lane can run you between $11 and sometimes $20 for the additional um, a la carte rides um and i feel like genie plus needs its own video and i'm still learning about genie plus so i don't feel really comfortable in really talking about that yet but i did want to kind of give you an idea of how much there is a difference in what you would pay for your ticket based on how many days you stay what type of ticket you get if you get a tick uh disney park hopper or not and if you um, like me, um, usually go with family who can get a military discount. Uh, so let's begin. So what I did, I did the same thing as I did when I was looking for the cost of a hotel room. I based my decisions on going in the first two weeks of November and I was able to put in, um, how many days I wanted. I wanted a five day park hopper. I'm a hopper girl. I know it's not for everyone. Some people are okay with just doing one park a day, but I like the variety of going from one park in the morning, taking a break, and then going to another park in the afternoon. It's not for everyone. Um, as a matter of fact, I would say if you have small children, you're fine without doing a park hopper. Um, I'm hoping that by the time that I actually get to go that um, there will be more rides open, that there will be more activities to do. And so I'm still looking at doing a park carper. But because we will be staying off property, I also have to take into account how much it will cost for parking at a park. So I put in November, I put my dates in, and for a Disney park hopper for me, it would be between 126 and 127 per day. Yeah, but that is with a park hopper. It will cost you a little less if you weren't using a park hopper. So total that up. If you're doing five days and those five days are 125 per day, I'm going to put the cost here. That is how much a five day park hopper would cost you to go to Disney. Now, if you are lucky enough to be a person who has a uh, annual pass, and because as of right now, you can't get new annual passes, but you can renew if you're a person who already had an annual pass. Um, and if you are a Florida resident, it costs you even less because you pay a deposit and then you can pay a monthly fee to allow you to go to the parks. There are blackout days, um, but it depends on which type you get. So a Disney Pixie Dust Pass, but... This is for Florida residents. Let you sparkle with Disney magic is what it says. It's $3.99 plus tax or $19 per month with down payment. Disney Pirates Pass is currently unavailable at the time of this uh, filming, but that would run you 
$6.99 plus tax or $45 per month um, with your down payment. Disney's Sorcerer's Pass, again, if you're a Florida resident or you're an eligible Disney Vacation Club member, uh, you would pay $8.99 plus tax or $63 per month with um, your down payment. Disney Incredible Pass, again, currently not available. With all of the fun and incredible powers of this pass, you'll feel super. That is the type of pass that me as a non-Florida resident would pay. That is $1,299 plus tax. Um, although a Florida resident could pay on that and it would be $99 per month with your down payment. Um, that kind of gives you a kind of a idea of what those prices are. Now, you do have to keep in mind that unless you're not if you're an annual pass holder or if you're a DBC um, owner, you I don't believe that you have to pay for parking at the parks. If you are staying on property and you have a ticket, you don't have to pay for parking at the parks, but you do have to pay for parking at the resort that you're staying at. Um, but in the park, so a preferred parking for your car or your motorcycle would be $45 to $50 per day. Standard parking for your car or motorcycle is $25 per day. Oversized vehicle parking, like a shuttle, a limo, camper trailer, RV, bus, etc., like if you're going with a big group, is $30 per day. This, um, I remember when it was $12 per day. But we were staying on property, so we didn't have to pay it anyway. So all of these things you have to take in consideration when you are making your reservations and trying to decide what you're going to do as far as, you know, staying at a, at a Disney park. Okay, so now, if you are able to get a military discount, Disney's Walt Disney World's Armed Forces Salute Tickets. And we have gotten those in the past. And right now for 2022, a base basic salute ticket, a four-day park hopper will cost you $329. A four-day park hopper plus will cost you $359. A five-day park hopper will cost you $349. And a five-day park hopper plus Will cost you 379 so already you can see that if you're um blessed to be have been a military veteran who retired or is a hundred percent on disability or if you are the spouse of a retired military person these are the type of discounts that you could get or if you're a family member of a military person these are what your ticket would cost you um, salute tickets with the Genie Plus. Keep in mind now that you have Genie Plus, it is $15 per day. So a four day park hopper would cost you $389. A four day park hopper plus would cost you $419. A five day park hopper would cost you $424. And a five day park hopper plus would cost you $454. Now also keep in mind that even if you get a park hopper, Plus, which basically gives you access to like the water rides. If I'm not mistaken, at this time of filming, there is only one that is actually open for you to use. So that's something to keep in mind. We don't swim, so we've never had a need for the Park Harper Plus. Just the Park Harper. Who is eligible for this discount? So, um, Armed Forces Salute tickets are available to active military U.S. members, um, uh, reserve military U.S. members, National Guard, U.S. Coast Guard, 
Commission Corps of the Public Health Service and Commission Corps of the National Oceanic and Astomapheric Administration. I could have said that wrong. Um, retired members of the military as well, or 100% service-connected disability or Medal of Honor residents. Now, there is an additional discount for veterans who have discharged honorably. You can sometimes get a slight discount on your ticket, but there's not usually a regular discounted ticket that you can purchase. So you would have to call your local base and find out information about that. I did try to Google to get more information about it. It was kind of hard to find um, just by looking on the internet. It didn't really give you an actual price. So that gives me the idea that it could change at any time. And then sometimes it's not available. There used to be a time where we weren't able to, if you were just a veteran, um, you weren't able to get a discount. Um, but now there is a plan where you can even get a room discount at Shades of Green, but it's only for two particular months. And I think it's January and September. Um, the same with tickets. Uh, you'd have to call to see what type of ticket you could get. Um, it will be a regular ticket and it might give you a percentage off of the ticket, but you cannot beat the price of a armed services salute ticket. You just, you already see 386 um, or whichever it was versus 129, you know, per, um, per night. I will say this, it used to be 250, it recently went up, so it is now 350. I'm pretty sure the price will go up again. So I always say to people, if you're getting tickets or if you're putting in for a um, resort room to use a travel agent if possible. And also the earlier that you can book, the better because you may be able to get in before prices increase. Um, recently, prices had just gone up. So um, if you're planning to go next year, I would try to see if I could lock in some prices now before next year's prices go up. Because at this point, Disney prices go up every year, it seems like. So get in while the getting's good. <laughs> so I hope this kind of gives you an idea about how you go about budgeting. You really have to keep in mind what your rooms are going to cost, where you're going to stay. Then you have to look at what your ticket is going to cost, which is the best ticket for you to get. Do you need a hopper? Maybe you don't. How many days do you see yourself staying, um, going into the parks? Try to have some days where you don't and you just have some downtime. And then I would say the next thing to look at is um, your meals. As the time of this filming, they don't have a meal plan available, but that could change at any time. And so next time that we discuss, we will be talking about how we budget for a meal for our meals. I forgot to tell you that in addition to getting room discounts via the military, you can also get save on your photo pass. So um, your memory maker could cost you normally the cost of a memory maker package would be 149 for the package if you order it at least three days um, before your vacation. If you don't order it until you get there, it will cost you 169. So that's really important to do in advance. Um, but through the military, you can get a discount of 90. You can get it for $98. So that is something that you want to look into as well. Um, if you are a annual pass member, I know it used to be included. I don't know if it is still included. And I know it was included with DC, DVC members. So if one of my friends who's an annual pass member or a DVC member, could you let me know if that's even something that's still available? Because I know that there were a lot of discounts and things that changed last year. And I'm not sure if that's still something that's included. I believe it might have been taken off. So I just wanted to put that in there because when doing your research, it's important. Y'all know I'm all about a budget. Wherever you can save some money. And if you can save, if you really want to have the photo pass, um, you know, package, then 
one, get it in advance if you can't get the military discount. And if you are military, look into getting the $98 package versus paying $169. Uh, it's all about that budget, people. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? And if you'd like to know when the next video will come out, all you have to do is hit that little notification bell below. So until I see you the next time, guys, have a blessed day. Bye.